So uh, I was about to ask you some question. I was asked to write my question before we met. And uh, during this time, I've seen the, the exhibition. So I changed a bit my mind about your work. <laughs> <laughs> of course, <laughs> because I saw, I knew some of your work before. And so what was obvious just looking at the catalog that what you were dealing with with the uh, beauty and suffering, but when I see it now, there's something m even more important. It's about love, your photos. It's about celebration. Pardon? It's about celebration. Ah, celebration of yes, what? Yes, of people like me, of people from South Africa, and also celebrating the space and all that is happening here. Yeah, yeah, it's very important. Because for every uh, uh, suffering, there is also joy. People sometimes find happiness and they try to overcome all the, the pain that they have been through. Yes. And your photos speak about that? My photos uh, are a way in which I celebrate and commemorate members of the LGBTQIA people of community, um, including myself. So, and it's basically said there are many people like, like us who were there way before us, but they never had an opportunity to be seen. Uh -huh. They never had an opportunity to have their voices heard at spaces like the museums and the galleries. Um, our countries have beautiful museums, but you hardly find images that speaks to the existence of queer people and trans people. So one had to find a way in which we change that so the world will get to celebrate with us and us to exist beyond just one month when there is gay pride or yeah. trans pride in our countries. But most of all, speaking as contributors to our country's economies, as taxpayers, as educators, as thinkers, as professionals. But there's a real dimension at the start of the exhibition, there's a real dimension about beauty, human beauty and love. Yes. This is very striking. So you did it on purpose, right? Of course, it's very important. We are beautiful people mm. and we love and deserve to be loved. It's as simple as that. And what is the aesthetic dimension in your work? It seems a bit journalistic question, but I think it's important because there's also the social. It's uh, the social, it's the political, um, it's, it's, it's historical, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in, in its entirety. But most of all, I, I want to use art education you know, as, a, as a, a drive to make sure that the messages are conveyed accordingly. You know, it's one thing to have a beautiful image, but it needs to say something. There should be a visual narrative that backs up that image. So for each and every portrait that you're seeing here, it is biographies of a people that live in, I mean, they belong somewhere. They form part of a, a different heritage. They have their own culture. They have their own traditions and rituals that they perform before they just like those, you know, the framed image or frozen image that you see there. First, as you look at each and every image, you ask yourself, who are they? Where do they come from? Without reading the statement, mm -hmm. how are they so modern? Because visual anthropologists, they presented a different image of black people. So, now one had to create images that recognizes and bring that respect to people who are often degraded or undermined or insulted or even vilified people who are often on the fringes of the society where we are displaced sidelined or forever you know attacked so now we owe it to ourselves to make sure that we present an image that speaks to this moment. And what about self-portraits? Self-portrait is about self-love, self-introspection, 
to relook and reflect. It's very, very important for photographers to pause what they project of other people should be of themselves as well to say in as much as we like photographs. What are we saying about ourselves? What messages of selves that we present out there in the world? And I think that that self-love is key. I mean, it's very rare that you find people who say, I hate myself. <laughs> no, so, but this is about yeah. an artist. <laughs> so I'm a visual activist before I'm an artist. My work is of political nature. So what I'm doing with this is, you know, is to claiming the space that was not often ours. And I guess that this is the first exhibition of its nature. But, uh, but taking a photo of yourself, how, how, how do you aim to make it social? Um, first of all, we socialize to not to look at ourselves in that way. And also resources make it difficult for people to self-present themselves. Otherwise, there are many beautiful images out there in the open that yes. are not yet realized. So for me, this is my responsibility most of all to say that in as much as I photograph other people, I'm also willing to bear, to be in the open, to present myself in this way and also to preach self-love without diverting the focus on selves to say, who am I in the world? Who am I as I continue to present these images to the world? What is my personal take on what is going on around me? What are my personal issues? What, which part of my body I like, I don't like? How my being forms part of the circular? But in uh, between two images, what is, what is the one which is going to incarnate your fight? Two, two images of yourself. Some don't uh, carry this message, right? Almost all depends on how you read images. For me, almost every image just speaks on, you know, their presence. One, this image right there, I'm covered with tubes around my hair, my body, my everything. Mm -hmm. The image is taken on the day I received the news that my sister died. So this e image is named after my late sister, who <coughs> at um, age 60 just passed, you know. So this is the way in which I pay tribute to somebody who is my blood who's connected to me. So like I could say, almost every image is based on experience, is based on presence, is based on something that triggered that day in which I memorized through it. Yeah, and then the other image on show um, is of that one, that image on reflection, on relooking, on presentation, that particular one. What, what, what mirrors carry for each and every tribe, for each and every you know, a uh, 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 country space, the meaning of mirrors and why we should look at ourselves being mirrored, you know, in relation to mirroring self in public. So it's again about love. Love. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I went to South Africa, the most striking things about South Africa is about violence, don't you think? Violence can be physical, violence can be silent. I'll tell you of the violence that is happening in Paris right now, like in France right now. In Toulouse, there were, there's a recent article that I read about how trans people, whom some of them are existing in these images, were uh, silenced for presenting um, a show. So you mean there's you violence know? everywhere? There is violence in everywhere. There is violence in Europe, but we don't get to hear about it. We don't get to read about it. There is violence in Africa that we read about because it's so blatant. It's in your face, and the media covers such. No, but for me, it was a physical feeling. Did it happen to you? No. Okay. Luckily. Okay, sure. So there is violence in. In Europe, there is violence in America. There is violence in Africa. In Africa, it's written about. 
in your country is not written about. In South Africa, it's physical. Here, it's silent. So, depends mm. on what you mean by violence. There's racism in, in Europe, there's racism in South Africa, there's racism in America. In Africa, you read about that racism, but here, how you present it, how you decide how to write about as mainstream media will be different than how South African journalists and writers write about. So I guess I could say we are honest with our feelings. Whereas with some people who write from the West, they mm. have a way in which they maneuver spaces and they carve it and they twist tongues in order to sound right. Otherwise, when we talk about pain, whether physical or not bloody, it is still violence. So I think that it's, it's um, very important uh, to be mindful when you speak about the, the South African violence, especially if you never experienced it. No, it, it was more it. about tension, in fact. A great tension. But you were speaking as a white person from a safe space. Exactly. So it cannot be compared. Of course. Because you're speaking as a tourist, you know, as a white person in a space that is previously infested by racism. Yeah, true. And apartheid that is brought by the very same West. So I think that speaking as like human beings, as adults also, we really need to be mindful mm. and how the very same West brought that violence to the South. You get what I'm saying? Exactly. What about David Goldblatt? He's my love. He'll forever be. He's, um, um, he's a mentor. He's with us as we speak. A very, very dear person to me will all, always be the master in his own trade, which then filtered into many of us as proteges. I went to, to market for a workshop. I studied there. So I could say that I've gained a lot. The fact that I'm able to speak to you as a visual activist, as a photographer, is through that man and his wife. And do you, do you remember when you met him the first time? I met Goldblatt around 2005, mm -hmm. uh, or even earlier. And then um, and I asked him if he could be my, <laughs> my mentor. So I appointed him to be my mentor. We had good conversations, good stories, and it was easy to have a person um, as a father figure who could look at my queer work without being judgmental. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I think that the compassion that he presented in some of his work spoke to how I presented my work. And I went to, I studied in Toronto through his scholarship. Ah. So he supported for my master's, uh, master program where I studied in, uh, in Toronto. And what do you think is the main thing that he teach you? Uh, to confront blackness. So him as a white man, you know, working mainly in black communities, kind of like help us to look at our own communities as black people, you know, and also not to be afraid not to be afraid. So in as much as spaces might be harsh and all of that, but still one needs to get there and work. So he worked so hard till the end. So I, I learned that from him. I'm still working and I wish to work until the end. Yeah. yeah. And if we, if we speak about art history, do you think you can do something absolutely new and from the past art history, what is there to do now? Queer art is not enough. LGBTQIA presence and the politics, they really need to form part of that art history. Whatever that you call art history, because there's a pretense around the world that there's art history. There'll never be any art history without queer history. There'll never be any art history without trans stories that forms part of that canon. Mm. So there's so much that we still need to, to do because we are catching up of like centuries of silence, centuries of de being displaced, centuries of being excluded from the museums. And I'm speaking of us as the authors, 
not only the custodians of these art histories that are pretentious presented in every museum. Mm. The galleries, they become the immediate space in which we could speak. But if you speak of art histories in the world, there is no country that could claim any art histories, that could author any art histories without our presence. So speaking as an insider in this community. So this is a little bit. And if I were to curate the show, this whole museum would have a little bit and many other museums and, 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 because honestly, we haven't started. Whatever so, there is art history is done by white writers, white curators, perceiving, it's their perception of what it should be. Because speaking, people speaking from the privileged corner, a corner that is resourced, where we become the artists and the curators are not us. So it's deeply political. So there's no art history that could exist without queer art. And so what's your next step? I wish to have a museum <laughs> in which I could have the work that makes sense to me, that speaks to me. In where, that way, in South Africa? It could be anywhere. In that way, it could juxtaposition what exists now. You know, if I could have that M M M P mm. <laughs> to myself, then it would mean that we are speaking on what is almost there. Because I'm saying, if you say, like you say, 100 years of art history, like European art history, American art history, then we have black uh, uh, art history that we 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 excluded. Mm. It's a lot of work needs to be done. I wish to have a museum before I die, and it could be anywhere. But home is where my. So that's your ne next target. It's not. It's it's my dream. If it target is like it, it's painful. It's a glitch. It's my dream. Let's call it a dream. So sometimes it's good to make it dream true. No, it will happen. I'm driven, and with most of what I've already produced, then it becomes part of that museum, including this interview. Voilà. <laughs> and uh, the director of the La Map speak about a good discomfort when one look at your photos. What do you think about that? I don't know. It is it is weird. He puts that in the introduction. It's okay. Do you think one need kind of revolution of the eye to move the spirit of people? Um, maybe you need a tender eye, maybe speaking if you have children, speaking as a parent, because this work is not for queer people or LGBTQIA people as well. Do you understand? It speaks to you as an aunt. It speaks to you as somebody's mentor. It speaks to you as somebody's sister. It speaks to you as somebody's mother. So to say, what if you had a child like me? How will you communicate with me? How will you further teach your friends who are so homophobic and racist about the presence of people like me? You get what I'm saying? It means that this is for all of us. Maybe that discomfort should have said this slash comfort. You need to have, you need to be comfortable to relate stories of a people that you care about. Mm. Maybe other people never had sight of seeing images of black queers in a setting like this one. Then it then teaches them, you know, to convey that message to many other people. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're teaching about art history because we think that it's fancy at art schools and yet we have maybe a, a queer presence and we completely ignore it. So now to say, what role are we supposed to play as people with an understanding of humanity? You get my point? Yes. So this is for all of us. Whether people are comfortable or not comfortable, it's not my, 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 my duty to make people comfortable. All I'm saying is like, we are here right now with you. Give us some respect recognize our presence because for too long we've been silenced by 
institutions like this one because those who were here before then they didn't want to have this content they were worried that they were going to lose their funding because their funders were either homophobic transphobic or queerphobic but then now it is up to all of us to be human beings once again <laughs> It's one as simple second. as that, yeah. And uh, just, there's a word I don't know in, uh, in English, it's beauty pageants. You know, we have Miss France, that is beauty pageants. Exactly, pageant. so could you speak about that? Beauty pageants, you have beautiful people everywhere. Mm -hmm. They compete or contest to have the winner, the most beautiful girl in the world, <coughs> yes? It happens with us too, in our community so, as well. So you have made a series about it. The aim is to make sure that people are, visibili are visible. So we're talking of visibility in every form. Because if one were to dissect from different professions that are existing in the world, you realize that there's something that has not been done right. So if South Africa is Miss South Africa, then you do have a queer person who is as beautiful and qualifies, but because of the status quo and exclusions and inequalities, people do not get to be seen or compete in those straight communities. And yet we say people have rights. Mm. Imagine what will happen in France if you have a trans woman representing your, your France at the Miss World. I think it was that in some... Uh competition of song but i'm speaking from here because we are here yeah, now yeah, 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 yeah. what will happen the whole country will come to a standstill because not every french person will agree so that's why i bring forward this contest this miss whatever because it's very important this is just like to test you know um people's uh What's the word? Acceptance? No, not even acceptance. Acceptance you have to do whether, I mean, we like it or not. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, like I said, we contribute towards the economy of this country. Pink euro is key. We have paid so much and yet we always have to beg for people to respect us. How is that? And so with beauty pageants. And so... Next week you go back to South Africa. What shall you do? I'm working on a big show. I'm sculpting. So I'm preparing for the next big Where? show. In Cape Town. Ah. Yeah. I've had some of my sculptor pieces here shown at uh, at a week Paris last April. Yeah. Sculpture? So, yeah, yeah. Ah, and you do you do painting now too, right? Mm-hmm. This is I've long, you? I painted before with my blood. I used to paint with my menstruation. Okay. Yeah, now I'm painting with oils and acrylics and stuff. But menstruation is one of the big taboos over the world. It can't be because that's how all of us we are. Yes, yeah. isn't that crazy? It is the blood clot that brought us into this world. Yes, there, there are at least one photo about it in, in the show. But there's, I have a lot of them. Yeah, but then I, it, it can't be taboo. Maybe we need to find the, the most decent way to deal with it. But why do you think it's a taboo? Because people have their own personal beliefs about women bleeding. But then before, after bleeding, there's a child born. If people willingly or are able to give birth, then we need to give respect to menstruation. It's work. And when is Cape Town show? In uh, May. Where? In Cape Town. No, but what place? <laughs> mm. um, uh, the, the gallery to be revealed soon, there'll be an announcement. D'accord. Yeah. Merci beaucoup. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Too. Thank you. Yeah.